The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMD's Alpha Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too and there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into MUA. Well, his earliest training was in fact in banking, would you believe, but has worked previously as a creative director at Elkline, which is a funky German sustainable outdoor clothing brand. He's created the concept of identity built branding, would you believe? And I love it. Based on a believe sign in the background of his screen that I'm looking at now is a fellow Ted Lasso fan. So that just makes him awesome as a given. And in the last couple of years has joined the ranks of SaaS Solutions Creators, which is why he's here, here with us today. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Julius. Guys, hey. welcome. Thanks for having me, Peter. <laughs> what a nice intro. Thank you. Not at all. You're very welcome. All right. So we'll in a second, we'll dive into all things MUA and there's so much to cover. Um, I feel like I need to give a public sort of service announcement to the listeners here when this is an app that's quite different to what we would normally cover. Um, I'm excited about it. I think it's really fascinating, but be ready to be taking on a journey that's just a little different to advice tech going forward. But before we do that, let's just get to know you a bit better, Julius. What is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? Yeah, so I would be in the, not really. I have to say, I'm, uh, it, it's a bit of a contradiction, right? Because our app is 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 pride itself that we use symbolism to yes. catch emotions. So, um, in in my personal life, I, I hardly use emojis. Uh, maybe a heart symbol to my wife. Okay. Um, so, you know, living in Hawaii, we use the shaka sign. Yes. Yes. But you know, yeah. I, I to be honest, I don't I don't use real emojis. Yeah, no. Perfect. Well, let's cover the smartphone too. So most of us probably need those surgically attached to us. We we just can't let them up, can we? Which is a bit dangerous. But if you had to delete all of the you know extra apps off your phone, off your smartphone, and just kept three, what would you keep? I think I could really keep it as with, I only could keep one. That one would be enough, and that's LinkedIn. I do like yes. being on LinkedIn. That's the only social network I you know I'm being active on and yep. um, been there for. I don't even know, 2006 or something. So okay. for a very long time. And and all the other ones I wouldn't need. So I, I'm not right. a gamer. I don't, um, I'm not really into photography. So again, there's this from my personal side and yep. that what you would see maybe and think there's, there's, you know, there's, there's this interesting relationship I have with technology. So LinkedIn would be my answer. Okay. I love it. So using a phone, heaven forfend, as a phone. Is that the main exactly. thing you used it yes. for? <laughs> yeah, and and maybe a, a quick quick side story. For many times already, I I buy like frequently these very old phones who who can only do text messaging right. and calling to detox myself from from smartphones. So so I don't know. Nice. Yeah, it, I have that. It's a very interesting relationship I have with technology. No, look, I completely understand. And as some well, as somebody that grew up without such things, um, I completely understand it and. 
really because the only time that I I think, oh, you know, really the world is better now is when I, you know, we all go out somewhere and you're meeting friends and you realize that without a phone that you can call them to try and coordinate it, it was much harder. Like trying to get mm-hmm. 20 mates together in one place was quite a process before we all had phones in our hips. But aside from that, I'm completely with you. It's it's not yeah. it's not something we need. You know, it's it's just something that can add, um, but sometimes also subtract. So but maybe it's right. also my German side in me. You know, if you tell me you have to be there at 2 p.m., I am there right, at 2 exactly, p.m. So it's exactly. just I don't need a phone for that either. That. We're just organized. <laughs> need, What's, why why exactly. do we need it at all? Oh, I love it. I love it. So right. let's dive into MUA. Now, like I said before, this isn't an advice tech tool as much as it is a tech tool. Talk me, talk to me about, let's go really high level just to get everybody sort of positioned um, about mm. what it, you know, where it fits. What category broadly of technology does it fit under? You know, if somebody had to label mm. um, the app, what would they put it under and what sort of tools are you normally sort of lined up mm. against, you know, as, mm. as comparisons? Yeah, so we are anywhere between employee engagement and um, corporate wellness. Okay. So I think we're in between, to use an Australian company, CultureM, and maybe Headspace for business. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, and and Headspace... um, I'm trying to remember whether I've mentioned it previously on the podcast, but mm-hmm. uh, Headspace, the gentleman that does the voiceover for Headspace can lull me into the most relaxed state ever. I think he oh, should, yeah. that voice should be everywhere. If I could have that as as my alarm mm-hmm. in the morning, I tell you, it's it's fantastic. Okay, so that helps us get a bit of a position, and we should start with what, if you can tell us what MUI stands for. What's what's literally mm-hmm. the letters stand for? It stands for me as all. Okay. And it describes the relationship bit, that the relationship and the interconnectedness we have within organizations. Right. And our belief is that all change um, in organization starts with the me and so with the self, yep. with the employee, and then there's a ripple effect within the organization. Absolutely. And I, I, I've seen that happen a lot. Um, because, you know, we're in financial services and of course, mm-hmm. therefore engage a lot with large corporates, you know, the big, you yeah. know, whether it's banks or insurance companies and things like that. And, and there's a lot of talk in those businesses about innovation. You know, it'll be this, wow, yeah. we've got to innovate, but very little time or energy spent on the individual and their imagination and ideas. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just, they're just told that something that they should do, not something that you nurture within the individual first before you mm-hmm. expect them as a business to do that. So, Or, or within a culture in general, I yes. would say that most businesses do not have a culture that nurtures innovation. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and, and yes, the, the, the individual prosperity is definitely a part of it, but mm-hmm. a lot, I guess a lot of companies still come like act from a place of control yes controlling people keeping control like being having everything measured yes but if we kind of like tap into that what we're going to do throughout the podcast tap into that emotional context of us humans there's just you know there's just a part where we have to let go yeah. of control and just you know trust the the natural development yeah and i think like you say <laughs> How can we? I mean, innovation really at its at its core is about imagination. I mean, that's you, you can't innovate unless you can you can come up with things outside of what your experience is. You know, you've got to be able to put yourself Man. outside of that to come up with ideas. And I don't think you can use your imagination when there is control. I mean, it's literally to me almost the posing yeah. <laughs> posing sides of the same thing. You know, it's 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 really letting go is what yeah. lets you think outside the box. So I'm with you. That level of, of restriction um, yeah. and control stifles that sort of yeah. thing. And and if ever there was a time when both resilience and imagination are going to be required, um, it's it's all the fast-paced change in action and demand and, <laughs> and intensity that's coming for people. So I'd love to know what's, what took you on this journey. I mean, given your background, I wouldn't have said from a really – sort of academic sense, you know, just looking at it superficially, that that this would be where you head. So what triggered this? What was what was mm. how did that come about? Yeah, I think it's a, it was a combination of two things, like my personal development. So yeah, looking through my my Vita, I, I started my career in advertisement, yeah. was successful there as a in, a in an early age, my mid twenties, I was in charge of, for example, consumer brands like all consumer brands of Microsoft, their creative campaigns, did automotive, beer companies, like a lot of bigger 
bigger companies and, yeah. and, 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 and bigger budgets. So on a career perspective, personally, you would say this guy has figured it out. Yep. However, any to every time at this point in life, when you would ask me, you know, how do you feel or what, what, what brings you joy? I, I couldn't really answer this question. And I think it was when I was 26 or so that I felt something that you would call burnout today, yeah. uh, that I was just really out of energy, didn't, I just was not happy and, and, and kind of like this draining feeling. It, it's just something, I don't know, those who have described it maybe know what I'm saying. It's very undefined. You're being this vac- vacuum position. It's it's kind of like, very, yeah, it's a really weird place. Yeah. So that was the, that is one side because that led to traveling the world, meeting really exciting people, Deepak mm-hmm. Chopra, Hawaiian artists, um, uh, different cultures, that kind of like helped me understand there's more to life than the concept that I knew from yep. growing up. And so let's call it a spiritual awakening, yep. uh, maybe. And then in the other hand, um, I, I was, you know, like throughout my career, always interested in, in the concept of identity, which led, you know, like later on to the, to the, to the methodology of identity build branding, which... Mm basically was the approach that instead of building brands from the outside in, which usually a company who builds a brand has an idea of a target group. So we always focus on the outside. There's a consumer, there's a target group, there's a market. And so based on these concepts, we're developing a brand to fit those um, needs or those demands. My idea was be, be kind of like an, uh, from observation that there's so many times are these disconnects. Well, how about we build something from the inside out? So something that comes from the intrinsic identity of a company. So the product on a brand is more like a natural evolution of that identity yep. than an than an kind of like outside creation or or yeah, you know that that fakeness that that yes. sometimes are embedded in brands. Yeah. So that job led me to more and more work with change and organizational change because branding and changing when you don't do it outside in, so when you do it inside out, (laughs) it goes hand in hand with changing an organization. And while I was working on these change projects, um, I realized how hard it is for people to change. Yeah. And one of the biggest factor is the disconnect we have with our own emotions and the ability to understand these habits that kind of like run in autopilot Mm. that kind of like on a very, we're not aware of those. That's why we call them. We run on autopilot that hold us back from changing towards that new idea or new, yeah, that new idea that we want to move forward to. Right. So that, that was the moment when I kind of like connected both sides of me into this concept of Mua. So I yeah. used something, a mindfulness exercise, which I use on a personal level and kind of like embedded it into, into this business exercise, which mainly said, dear leadership, please write down your daily activities and then rate them with an emotion. And by doing so, over time, you become aware of your emotions. You can recognize them, you understand them, and you can manage them. And interestingly, too, in the concept of change, you will become more aware of your daily decisions, the habits that benefit the change and the bad, these habits that hold you back from change. And that's mm. kind of like what's the starting point of MUA. And it's it's so interesting. I mean, there's so many things to touch on. I mean, journaling is something that if if anybody's ever touched on wellness at all, like any... <laughs> You only needed mm-hmm. to have, have watched a TED talk, or like there's not much you need to have dived into. This is a topic, and journaling comes up, you know, for, mm. uh, through people from lots of different backgrounds, and it's so so interesting to me to apply that to work because mm. it's it's literally everywhere else applied to anywhere but you know, like it's it's everything else. No, no, no do it about the start of your day, the end of your day, the you know, the weekend. It's it's often not focused yeah. on work, which is so interesting given for many of us, what we're doing at work is the largest portion of our time. Exactly. You know, so, yeah. you know, there is, a, there is some, some almost obviousness about that, that that's like, well, yeah. of course this is what we should be doing. Um, yeah. And I agree um, there's, and I've caught myself in this, is there's almost a, 
zombie state we can get ourselves into when we're working. You know, it's that shuffling along, just keep on, keep on going, you know, and, and it's only once you become aware um, of what you're doing and reflecting on it. And it, it, I guess for people that haven't done that in any part of their lives, it sounds like it's something that's going to take a lot of time. Do you know, with like, am I going to sit on my own and, and cogitate, you know, gazing at mm. my navel for an, an hour yeah. each day? It's not that. It, it's, it can be something that's, that's um, relatively quick to do, but it's about a, a new habit, isn't it? So this isn't even um, um, changing yeah. them to begin with. It's just adding a, a new one, which is this awareness and reflection so that then you can start to see yeah. what you're doing. And I want to add, like, I think what we made different, so we do have a journal in, in, in our app as well. So there's a there's a journal app in the app. Mm. Um, but I think we really simplified the the concept of journaling. So awesome. it's, it's when I say writing down your daily activities, I mean that literally. Like yeah. this conversation is written down how, from breakfast to morning coffee, talking with colleagues, going into the lunch break writing a proposal, meeting with a client, all of these activities are, you know, have to be right. Like we, we asked you to write them down mm. into our application. You, of course, can integrate them with your calendar so you don't have to do double entries and stuff like that. But we are for retrospective and it is for reflection. And there's a lot of beauty in there and mm. it doesn't take a lot of time. So yep. in our, like our average user takes between five to 10 minutes a day max like oh, five fantastic. is sufficient. Yeah. So it really doesn't take a lot of time. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't, that, what, what I really like on our product on Mua is that it doesn't take that, journaling can be tricky. So I, I do journal, but it's, it's, it's sophisticated in a way. Mm. It's kind of like meditation, right? It so is. when you, when people say meditate and you sit there and then it's, it can be, it's, it's a kind of like a, an overstimulation that the, the silence can be really traumatic. Yeah. So, I think the way we designed this makes it really easy for you to yeah. get access to that, like to tap into that space of retrospective and reflection yeah. um, in a very gamification, like in a very kind of like fun way. Yeah. Um, and then you can add journaling in addition. So our team helps people to journal when, when we, we walk companies to journal exercises. We have template systems we provide. So we really make it easy and we also customize questions for specific needs, so nice. Okay, yeah. so and and I should have asked actually how to say say the <laughs> app name Mua, which sounds much better better than MUA. You do MUA sounds like a university. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying it. No, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's all right. It sounds far far nicer. So it's so much better. So I, I caught that. All right. So let's talk about the users. Um. So clearly, the obvious one is the employees themselves. Um, so yes. this is, you know, the staff and, and I'm assuming that it can be small, medium sized businesses as well as large corporates yeah. that, that really it's just, you know, somebody working within a team. So, yes, um, but it, it includes, I want to say that it includes leadership Yep. because so sometimes when we say employee, you know, people kind of say, it's okay, it's, it's the, 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 the work base. Yeah. Work base, <laughs> yeah. yeah, has nothing to do with management or higher management. No. So it of course includes leadership, leadership benefits greatly from emotional intelligence, which we ultimately develop with MUA. Yep. So we encourage all all people working in an organization to go through through our software and exercises. And look, I think um, I'd even go so far as to say that, that it could be a must for leadership because I think yes. when you think about big corporates particularly, then yeah. as you start going up those layers, then you go from somebody who's um, prov- you know, performing tasks and to dos, and therefore the accomplishment or or the gee, I yeah. got things done today can be quite high. Like you can get some some good feedback on that. The higher you go, the less it's about to dos, and the the more it seems like it's endless meetings, right? And it's just always. And I think this type of thing could highlight how you feel about that, how you um, can then adjust yeah. what you do. Like I I think that could be super valuable at a lead, leadership level. Yeah, absolutely, and also yeah. for C level. So there's yeah. a, I mean. The, 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 the base level of MUA, we, we call self-awareness. So it's the context of emotional intelligence, so IQ. Mm-hmm. Um, the base level of EQ is self-awareness. So without self-awareness, you, you can't build anything that is emotional or intelligent. Yes. And to build great self-awareness, there's this, this the perspective, the relationship, the awareness we have with ourselves, yeah. but also the others. So 
the the, the level of self awareness is defined on how how good like how tra- like how transparent you understand yourself your own emotions but also the emotions from others it's this level of empathy so yes. many times in C level so the higher we go the, they're missing that feedback component because right. you don't have necessarily the, like the same structure like you would have in a team structure or in mid mid management you know where you have 360s and yep. all these type of things so the higher you go it's it's actually really important for those um for you know for these c-level managers to go through exercises like this to kind of like keep in touch with them and similarly, I guess that applies. And you know, for somebody say like myself, I'm a you know owner of the business. Then it's a similar. It it can be a lonely place, you know. Yes. So, like you say, it's not you're not actually getting that much feedback or, or interaction in that sense. So, yes. yeah. So and there's some real the value question in, that. in self. I feel like yeah. I mean, as being self-employed myself for so many years, we are just in that. And we're just accepting so many things. And we're yeah. not differentiating an emotion, right? We're just feeling a certain state. My, my favorite emotion is being overwhelmed. Yep. I mean, 99% of the time we hear that. Yep. And then you ask, well, what makes you overwhelmed? How does yeah. this overwhelmed feel? In which situation does that appear? Like, is there, can you separate it, like I said, in a specific time of the day? So if we're t- trying to take that apart, there's so many layers to it. And then you actually understand, oh, wait a second, I'm not generally overwhelmed. It's actually that situation at that point of time with this type of people or this type of work that Mm -hmm. creates that type of um, reaction, emotional reaction inside me. So maybe I should focus, you know, um, changing that versus just being depressive and feeling overwhelmed, which overshadows my entire day and performance and well-being. And doesn't shift because nothing that's happening doesn't fixes that exactly you know (laughs) and also because you sit there and say well it's all is bad i'm overwhelmed because you have already accepted that is the totality of things that yeah that's my state this is my reality this is just what it is absolutely absolutely well and i guess you know an embodiment of that is when you go to events and how how are you going good busy like that's Mm -hmm. another it's just the state what are you you're busy like yeah, probably more than I that. I never understood <laughs> that, to be honest. Right? I never that was something too. I never understood why people always say they're busy and they right. say it in a way that that it makes them feel good. Like the way they would say it would 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 it sounded like that's that's something positive. Like they're happy, you know. Like, like it's, it's said in a similar happy, way. I'm busy. Yeah. I'm I'm successful. There's this association with you be you be busy, you be successful. You have a lot to do and. um I, I mean, more and more you see a shift in leaderships or in, in, you know, company owners who said, you know, actually, I'm happy I have nothing in my calendar today or we're protecting these things more or right. I actually am not busy. That allows me finally to think about something. I mean, earlier we talked about innovation. So we need space to clear uh, to clear your mind and, and to think freely. And you yeah. can't do that if you're constantly busy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I completely agree. Uh, so, all right. So let's talk about then that first level, which um, is the – and talk about – even though we're not using emojis, these icons that you're using mm-hmm. as a way for somebody to identify, like start to identify how they feel about things. Talk us through how that works for, say, yeah. an employee. So the 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 so the app asks people to write down their activities like I described right. it earlier from yep. your morning coffee to meetings etc. Um, and then it comes with an associated question: How did that activity make me feel? Okay. And so instead of now answering these questions in a verbal like in, in articulating yep. it through conversation or in writing it down, we decided we use symbols because. Yep. Most people cannot articulate their true emotion on a specific task or a specific kind of like sensation they feel in their body because usually the emotion is somewhere in your body. Yep. You somehow don't really know what it is. And many times you just, in this, in this example that you said earlier, you just said, I'm good. So right. we're shortcutting it. So we, yep. avoid, we avoid the real emotion or we avoid you know, to face it. And then we, we kind of like do what, what we, what we do. And we just say, we're good. So we use symbols instead. We have a heart symbol that stands for any, everything that is energizing to okay. simplify it. So it's, it's not just something, everything that gives you good energy, 
um, it's a law, ostensible law of, of course, something yep. you like, but let's say it simplify if it gives you good energy. Then we have a flame and it's not lit up. It's not a positive emoji <laughs> with it is sometimes used. So this comes from burnout. So that's okay. why we used a flame. And these are energy, uh, these are emotions that train you. Yep. Something that makes you feel little, you kind of like, you know, you, you, you're losing energy. You don't be excited or anything like that. Sometimes yeah. it can be fear and, and other things as well. So we use that symbol for that. And then we have a line. It's our neutral sign. You can use that when you don't really know what it is. And that's totally normal. So sometimes okay. we just don't know whether it's energizing or it's draining. It's just something. It's there. Yep. But I can't really categorize it yet. Yeah, okay. That's how it works. So we use symbols. Uh, the reason why is it gives more people access to their emotions because yep. it simplifies them. Yep. And two, a picture like a symbol in association with an emotion is easier to access for somebody. Mm -hmm. You can see that, for example, I like to say in real retail, uh, back in the days we had, we used to do service and then we did service right. with smileys, right? Mm -hmm. So the interaction with the surveys where you touch a smiley, how was this experience, yeah. is much higher than it is with, you know, verbal feedback or yeah. something, of course. And it's not just because it's time. There's this urge when there's a symbol that people want to interact with it because yeah. it's this clear distinction. Yeah. So that's pretty unique to us. So we developed our own three symbols and that's kind of like how, what, what you can see throughout the app. So you see these symbols, not just in these activity widgets, what we call, you also can rate your day overall with one of these three symbols yeah. and then you can categorize and, and, and compare your analytics based on these three symbols. Okay. And so that then is the layer of the analytics is, uh -huh. is what that means, say, over time, I'm betting. But uh -huh. also, is it help trying to help identify activities that are particularly draining versus energizing? Correct. Is that like some, some yes. themes? Is that what you're looking for? Yes. Is some things that appear? So, so you have the, 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 the emotion itself, and then we have another layer. It's called tags, mm -hmm. which are completely customizable. And so tags could be something like uh, accounting, a personal, uh, can be um, in a, a project ID, a client name. So for those who work with clients, I always yep. encourage to use a client name yep. as a tag because we do have these clients who really uh, energize a team yep. and we do have these clients who actually take a lot of energy away. So as a leader yeah. in leadership, we want to know, you know, which which clients are what and what are the reasons why those are draining and those are giving more energy. So there's a lot yeah. to, to uncover then behind. So, but that's what you can see in the analytics. You then can compare these tags with each other's. For bigger plants, for bigger teams, we say 20 plus, we have... Um, also the abilities to compare teams with each other based okay. on their emotions. Uh, but what we never do, that's very important to us, you can never see the identity of a user or an employee in these analytics. So okay. all the input you do is always anonymous. It's impossible for leadership or account holder to see, oh, Peta is doing X, Y, Z. So it's only on the top level of a team. And even though in teams we have certain restrictions, so we pretty much eliminated the possibilities to spy on people or okay. to use our tool for decision-making to hiring or firing. That's not the intention of the tool. So that covers, um, you know, one of the questions I always cover is, you know, what business or practice in our instance for financial advisors would this work well for and who wouldn't it work well for? Clearly, if they're uh -huh. obsessed with monitoring and, and I want to know every detail, then this isn't for them because it's not giving them that. This is not designed to give leadership or the business owner detailed insight into every task a team, team member does in a day. That's not the point and that's not what's going to be provided. No, yes, yeah. it, it only gives I mean, it on a team say, level. I think so that is, that is unnecessary. Like it's not something that I think yeah. is good, but some people in this new environment with people working from home and, I mean, our practice is fully virtual, get obsessed with I want to know what's happening every minute of every day. Yeah, I mean, I would love to have these conversations because I think it's 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 – there are a lot of reasons why I wouldn't advise doing yeah. that. Um, and a, it's not. It's there's no proof that it actually works. No. Like it, it, it all. No. And there's all proof that it creates the opposite. Like yep. controlling your people, monitoring the people on a task level base. Um, there's something like uh, you know, 
you need a circle of trust and 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 and, and psychological safety to be yes. to 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 perform in mm -hmm. your best self mm -hmm. and we have all these beautiful statistics how much billions of dollars in this example the united states companies are losing because of people are not fully present or having sick days etc yeah. so my belief is always i hire people so i get their full potential right so i need to nurture this potential and controlling and micromanagement never nurtures no. the potential of people and, no. and that's not my personal opinion there's like a million and one studies around that yeah so we don't do that you you can but I, so to to kind of like um, emphasize that you can of course see a lot of great things so yes. you can see for example we call it it's a like a pulse a yep. health pulse of your organization you can see am i is it a temporary peak whether negative or positive or is yep. it a trend yes. and if you see trends then you can uh, counteract you can um, offer preventative measurements we also have a process where there's a uh, frequent coaching input input from from experts who go yep. over the data with the account owner and if we identify you know specifics then we would recommend specific coaching which is nothing that Mua does but our network partners are offering Beautiful. Um, or the company already works with organizational developers or other coaches then we would give data input for them so they could create programs that help, you know, um, help whatever needs to be helped. Yeah, fantastic. And I think, um, look, it, it's an, it's such an interesting conversation in this whole virtual hybrid in office, like this new world we're in. Mm. And um, even small, what, what surprised me is even small businesses that therefore can be nimble, like we can react to those things a lot faster than, I mean, big businesses who have 10-year leases, like this is not a small thing that they need to consider, right? Whereas for us, mm -hmm. generally, our ability to react is is a lot quicker and, and we can sort of make different choices. Even in that environment, the old constructs we hold on to and the stories we tell ourselves to justify those, you know, it's a, well, you know, if they're in the office, I've got more confidence about what they're doing. And I remember having that conversation with a principal of a practice and I said, well, but they could just be playing Minecraft on their computer at in the office. Like, I mean, it's this, so, you know, the, the trust is needs to be there no matter what. Like, it doesn't matter where they are. Yeah. It doesn't matter even if they're on the other side of the world. You know, it's, you're right. These things are not, you know, monitoring and micromanaging um, in either place is damaging uh, and it doesn't get you the outcome you're looking for. Um, and the other level maybe on that is since you, you just created that picture of, you know, a person needs to sit on the desk and then our understanding of productivity is there's a doing, like there's yes. some sort of movement, tapping on the keyboard, clicking mouse, being loud on the telephone. I'm concerned what happens up here in their mind, yeah. whether or not they're engaged in, the, in, in their job. Yeah. Whether they are like proactive, problem solving, you know, doing what I hire them for, yes. or they're just hacking on their keyboard and basically do nothing. Right. So I think we'd really have to shift our understanding of what defines productivity. And two, of course, with the increase of artificial intelligence, what actually is the diff like, what is our role as humans? Like, what mm. are we contributing uniquely? Maybe even now in future, the question, what can we contribute uniquely and better as that as machines? Yes. And that goes back to our mind, the emotional context of us humans. So, yeah. but honestly, we are really weak in that, what defines us as humans and right. what we could contribute uniquely. So I'm really passionate about helping people, you know, to train and to re-identify our yeah. emotional context and to be in touch with ourselves. And yeah. interestingly, how we start, you know, being much more all these qualities that that we that we want an employee to have, they all start in their minds. Yes, yes, and yeah. and you know, you mentioned EQ before, and I'm you know one of those people historically that you know I'm a I'm a, a geek. I study easily. You know, maths is innate mm -hmm. to me, and people focus a lot on IQ and. And it's always bothered me a little, in part because um, the way that, say, things like universities and these formal education places measure intelligence is by being able to repeat something back. And to me, that's not a lot about smarts. That's about repetition. And <laughs> like, that's a different thing entirely, right? Whereas yeah. problem solving, 
critical thinking, like these things that have an impact on another human being, right, where you can change their future, where their transformation, you know, that yeah. is a different type of intelligence and to me leans far more into the EQ side because I think by knowing ourselves better, we're going to be more able to help others. You know, I think Absolutely. that's like you were saying, that that empathy, almost empathy for ourselves in terms of understanding mm-hmm. why, understanding where it's coming from, I think will then yeah. translate. And for financial advisors, that's probably the biggest impact we can have. Absolutely. I think absolutely for everybody who deals with people yeah. and advises people, not just like, like I said earlier, this, this concept of self-awareness, it goes beyond yourself. It yeah. goes to the, like to your surrounding. It, it, it's the ability to understand how someone else is feeling and having like addressing this with empathy, not just by casual saying, oh, yeah, I hear you or something like this, or sometimes it, it, that even can be helpful. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I, I absolutely agree with you. Mm. Like for, for, for these type of works, I think EQ is, is highly important. I think IQ is comes from an old concept of industrial, right. you know, epoch that we don't have. Like repetition at this time was was what was needed. That, yeah. you know, probably that's why we were all trained that way. Yeah. But I believe now more and more different qualities are important to us as humans and. Um, yeah, we. I really think we should nurture them. Absolutely, and in fact, now that. I mean, and this is literally just a realization as we've been talking, but if we're trying to distinguish between AI and, I mean, you, as you said, you're on LinkedIn. I mean, you can't open LinkedIn without there be something, being something about AI, right? I mean, it's just, it's all there. Then when I think about AI, that more closely connects to IQ, right? Because mm-hmm. it's information, it's analysis, it's data. You're like, it's all of those things, whereas as humans, the thing that differentiates us from that is EQ. You know, like, I mean, that, that to me is that now I'm simplifying massively, but I think that actually helps me understand where I can develop myself to yeah. then not counterbalance, but to see AI delivering one element, sure, but it can't deliver the other, you know, and that's where we can double down on. That's where we can develop ourselves um, yeah. to, you know, really go forward. Also, if I, if I may add, I think that, did you say did the question with AI then of course becomes so on on that rational level and and I want to call IQ in some some sort rational. Yep. Um, it will it will outbeat every human. Yep. It's just what it is. Yep. So the question then is, and I think that's where the fear comes from many people in in how fast uh, AI is developing itself and and and, and becomes that that super super intelligence so the, the 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 our job in my opinion in the future becomes to to kind of like build the parameters in how, what type of world do we want to live that that world still is human yes it's, 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 it, it, the human experience needs to be possible for us to be identified as humans yeah because it, and, and that's kind of like i believe the balance and again yeah. Here, the, the the emotional intelligence, the, the the context of emotion, is highly important to to counterbalance and to design that future world. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 so that's for us as individuals. Then, like you say, we connect that through our teams, you know, and so in the business. And I'm betting that, you know, by improving emotional intelligence over time and applying some focus and energy to that, then their resilience and their ability to adapt, you know, all those sort of things, there's a there's a strength that gets behind those. Um, and yeah. what you may not be aware is, so financial advice as an industry in Australia is, well, it's effectively been under siege for a couple of decades, it feels like. Like it's one and of those industries, lots of legislative change, lots of, you know, um, in-depth look by government, all sorts of things that have gone on. And so- that ability to um, – so that the build-up or the the well of resilience, I think, is going to be um, something we probably underrated historically because it wasn't something we ever focused on, but we're going to still need that. It's just going to be a given, I think, for our industry that we this is just going to continue. We're going to be under the microscope forever. So so I like the idea of of giving our teams some tools that will yeah. that will help them with that and, and of course, let them thrive. I mean, fantastic. You know, let's let's give them something that really unleashes them. And communication, one of my like most favorite 
elements or qualities that we contribute to teams and organizations is the way they talk with each other. Right. Because there's no better conversation that you can have with someone who actually can articulate, what do I need? How can you help me? Yeah. In a very specific form is the best foundation for a team to self-solve problems yeah. and to thrive and to you know build camaraderie and all these beautiful qualities that we always look out for. Mm -hmm. But where should they come from? Because most team situations are, as we said earlier, I'm overwhelmed. Like these, these, these over, these at all this definition of this is how I feel. Nothing is possible. I don't have time. I can't deal with this. All these avoidance and rejections. Yeah. Because we don't have that clarity within ourselves. We can't be specific. But yeah. that's kind of like what I love on, on, on Mula. And when we talk and work with organizations together is when that stage fades out and the new states come in and people actually say, you can help me and this is how you can help me. Yeah. And that's that's beautiful because then this self-dynamic kicks in and that's what I love to see when we, you know, you don't need a lot. This goes back to control. You don't need a lot. Usually teams organize themselves beautifully yeah. because we all want to do good things and we all want to be happy. Yeah. And being productive in our work is part of contributes, you know, largely to our state of happiness. Mm. So I, I don't fear, you know, when we, I don't I don't need to see somebody, but we definitely need to nurture that culture so that people can, you know, can express and live who they truly are. Yeah. And and the rest is 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 kind of like an it's really an auto, it's an automatism. It it just works magically by itself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the I mean, that's the best way to go about it, isn't it? Is, is when, the, like, like with what you've designed is these small things. Let's just add a small thing we're going to ask to, you know, add to what you're doing. And then let's get some insights from that. And then like, so, yeah. so it, to make any change, I mean, when we're trying to do behavioral change for money, like giving somebody a 40 point plan with lots of difficult and traumatic things, it's just not going to get there. You know? So, you know, awareness yeah. is I mean, where you, you could, start, you right? Could you could use the same exercise. We we have tested it in, in the field of addiction. You could do that behavioral change. I mean, it's that simple thing. It's yeah. very, very simple, but it's very impactful. And the fun thing too is it grows with you. Right. So the more aware you get, the, the, the symbols, you know, many times we got the feedback, why don't you add more symbols and so that I can, or why don't you do zero to 10 or something right. like this? And I always said, you know, there's something like a baseline of awareness. So what is a hard for me today in five years, in a year, in a month, is feeling entirely different. So the way I chose or I relate with this emotion right. will change. So for me, it's always accurate. Yeah. So I don't need one to 10 and add all these complexity to it. Yeah. It's still the same and, and it does what I want it to do. So I don't need it. So let's keep it simple. Yeah. And you're you so right in terms of it being a, a you know, an icon or an image or a symbol as opposed to a number. We um I mean to me, you know, maths is a bit of a language for me because that's that's yeah. the way my brain works. But for many people, you know, when they look at those zero to tens, it's like, oh for goodness sake, they'll just pick five. Like it's just exactly because it seems easy and I'm I'm not offending yeah. anybody and it's not other end or yeah. like it's not you know my brain's like right well if I assign this many points to this or right, like okay fine but for most people it's not you know and two because many times you see a one to ten you think of the of the observer you don't yeah. think of yourself yes and so I will I see with the emotion like the it's symbol a is a bit different yeah. exactly but that yes. becomes different it's more intimate. And I don't have, to, it doesn't represent a judgment necessarily. Yep. It's just a selection of a, of a hopefully beautiful looking icon. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So then, I mean, one of the things is as a topic we, we always cover is the extent to which an app impacts client engagement. Now, clearly this isn't going through to the end client. So it's not something there they'll see as an app, but from what you were saying, it, it could provide great insight in terms of the types of clients that um, add energy versus subtract. So there'll be some great um, insights from a team's perspective of, and because it might not just be the individual, like it, it might not be the fact that it's, it's um, you know, Mr. Grumpalicious or whatever, <laughs> it's just a pain <laughs> in the neck to deal with. You might actually see some trends about a type of service that's just proving 
tough. Everybody just finds it super draining. And so it gives you that opportunity to take a look at it and go, oh, okay, wait a minute. Um, yeah. You know, here's some, here are some themes, like you say, that are showing based on a certain client type mm. as an example. Is that the case? Is that the sort of insights that you could glean over time? Yeah, I would say yes. So you, you yeah. read and we, we, I have not worked with financial advisors yet. So we have worked with, with marketing agencies and we yep. have realized that there's a huge difference between clients yeah. and um and, and, and uh, many times in addition to those who rather create stressors for teams they're also the ones who the margin <laughs> the profit margin is rather limited right and why is so, that always the case right it's <laughs> yeah but but then you know the, it, that brings you to an entirely other thing so the I, I believe too in your in your economics you should include something that i call energy available yeah so so many clients not just you know have have a you know kind of like have a limited margin. They also take a lot of energy, which then takes away the energy from others who would convert it in a much more profitable way. Yeah. So I think absolutely yes to answer your question. You could do that. I also want to say that it it of course um, enriches the relationship and the forms of relationships you have with your clients because you right. communicate differently. I mean, people with that sense of awareness and people who are not feeling stressed or people who breathe before they pick up the phone or people who are, have a calm in their self right. communicate differently. Yeah. And that communication creates trust. So, and I would say in an industry like yours, that trust, that calm, that has a positive effect on the relationship I have with my client and uh, and and all these just different things and nuances that maybe create conflict in the future suddenly or did create conflicts in the past now are you know avoidable yep. because you don't have that in you anymore. So I think in these in these service industries, advisors, um, there's a lot that we that we mirror out, and sometimes yeah we receive a lot. But but we can train too to just not attach to these things. To yeah. you know, sometimes this can be offended. Sometimes there's a lot of raw emotion, specifically when money is lost or yes, you know, whatever yeah, it share whatever markets, the case. We're all yeah, our exactly. highs and lows are linked so much to the share market yeah. and what it's doing. So yeah. and that and then you have the ability to breathe, but also address it with empathy and compassion. Yeah. I mean, that's more now from own experience with dealing. With, with other service providers, many times they think, wow, you know, you could have just addressed it or say, I hear you, I feel yes. you. Yes, I know it's a difficult time, but this is what we could do. Like if you don't keep the calm, if you don't have your emotion under control, how can you guide that person who is clearly currently yes. in, a, in a difficult stage? So I believe our tool would help greatly um, to just improve your own ability of um of of handling your own emotions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I completely agree. So uh, integration, so you mentioned that um, the tool can integrate with sort of the calendar, basically the calendar tool, right. so whether that's Google or Microsoft, um, so yep. that then you don't need to enter that meeting in to your yes. sort of today's activity um, that can be yeah. integrated, which is great. Okay, any other uh, integrations or is that the main thing because it's mainly just about yep. what happened in the day? Yes, we currently don't have any standard integrations. We can yep. do custom integrations. So okay. if a if a client has a specific, let's say, a time tracking tool, that's something we hear often. Yeah, we do, and and there's an API. We we are able, of course, to to customize that, and um, you know, many times it makes sense. We just don't have it as a standard integration a la carte for everyone. Okay. And I should have asked actually, so in terms of the user experience, is this something mm -hmm. that sits in say Chrome or is an actual app on the desk? Like how does it work in terms of how they get to it? Mm -hmm. um, the team it's get to it. So it's a, it's a browser, browser based, based software. Yeah. Okay. So we don't Perfect. have an app. The, the reason is mainly that, you know, since we address companies, that's, that was always our market, like mm. B2B. We experienced that mobile apps can be rather tricky in a, yep. in a rollout. There's a lot of privacy concerns and data breach concerns uh, with mobile phones. So yep. we decided we 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 be browser based first. Um, we are planning uh, to do uh, you know Chrome extensions and stuff like that. We we work on on um, on specifics for the transportation industry, something yep. entirely different. And there yep. might be an app. So that's something on our roadmap and something I'm somehow 
super passionate about <laughs> yep. so that kind of like the, the the whole interaction can be much more on what we said with the retail space is yes. more tapping the emotion instead yep. of really going through the individual in and out yeah so but yeah it, it, it's it's all browser based well and given most of us are now operating in most of our tools are browser based too then that's where we're living you know so you know it yeah. makes sense and and it then you know working towards like you say a chrome extension or things like that i mean that's how for example we use something called guru or get guru which is like our oh, I love knowledge base. Guru. how good oh, is I love it? it it's fantastic yeah, i love them oh, yes. like, it's our ip it's it. Like yeah. people talk about, you know, selling businesses and I'm like, well, that to me is the thing I'm going to tie up in a bow. You know, should we ever yeah. decide to sell in the future? Because it's literally how we do things. So yeah. it no, now I like sits, it too. Yeah, it yeah. now sits in our in our browser. It's just a little thing there and we all just know to to refer to it all the time. So I can see that as a natural extension um, yeah. of what you're doing. Is there anything else that's sort of down the track of – of you know on the development path um or even wish list like oh i'd love it to get to this point is there anything like that yeah we have a lot uh of course on the wish list (laughs) (laughs) one one of the things that i'm excited about is like um we we will work uh to 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 optimize our journal with more what what if this then that kind of idea so yep. basically self-help through specific templates. We're also working on integrating AI actually to kind of like help contributing customized um, solutions, questions. So for us, it's all about asking the right questions to reflect on. Yep. Um, the other part is uh, body mapping. Um, I would like to include body mapping so you can then assign emotions to to uh, to, to your body. Like yep. there's a, basically a body map. Because it's the the body mind um, experience and, yep. and and getting an awareness of that as well. Yep. Something that I'm interested in that's not fully discussed, but I'm interested in. And then I think the bigger scale for us, and that was since the since the founding date of the company, we always had the passion to include uh, persona type heat mapping. Right. Um, we uh, we there's like management systems. So uh, TMS also an Australian one, for example. So basically, at the end, I want, if you look at our dashboard, you get an idea of what type of people work in your company. Right. Um, and that's not specific in identity. It's rather the the, the way how they react and deal and their, and their emotional capa- capacities yeah. to then build a culture and a team that is fully balanced with itself. Right. And that's an interesting, you know, as a, as a female in a male-dominated industry, that type of approach like i could see if a if a large corporate so one of these financial institutions did that what would start to there would be some of those themes that would be way and i and i don't mean that it's necessarily gender based but i think it would naturally be an extension of we're not getting enough viewpoints we're not we don't have enough diversity we don't because i think that comes out in people's behaviors the way they interact the sort of things they're comfortable with all that sort of stuff the more insight we can get broadly of mm-hmm. that then you can start to see the holes you can go, well, wait, yeah. we're missing this thing. You know, there's, we're really weak on that side. So it's a fascinating sort of area as a bigger picture um, for corporates to yeah. go, go down. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot for corporations. I think our what we hear a lot at the beginning is always, well, but why? Like, like it, it, it just feels like too, 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 it's not technical enough, you know, yeah. or it, it feels like, again, it goes back to this concept of control, but what do I gain from it and how do yeah. I do that? We always want that, 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 yeah, we always want that control. But I think all of those, when you let go of that control and actually empower your people, I mean, we like to say that, but if you actually do that <laughs> and you give back the authority to your teams and self-manage themselves, it's possible. And suddenly you have really a wonderful organization and a true culture that does all the things that you need them to do in yeah. a time that is constantly changing and asks so much for this, from this workforce right now. Yeah. I mean, that's what I wonder all the time. We see that. We see the world is literally transforming and we, we know we have to change and adapt. And at the same time, we just cannot. Yeah. There's this there's this thing in change and humans that is it's just it's just hard. It is. And it's, so it's, I, yeah. Yeah. I, it's almost like our our in our our minds are like like sheer bloody mindedness. You know, it's that no. <laughs> it's this resistance yeah, con- to change, isn't it? <laughs> there's just this conflict that there's this conflict in inner stance that we have yeah. that we just don't want to change. 
But if you break that, and if you like, if you allow your your people to to do the work, it will happen. Yeah, and you will see that your organization truly thrives. It can, it's, it's able to to go through these paths of change because there are a lot of bumps on the road, and there's a lot of transition innovation. Again, I love that you said it earlier. Where should it come from? Mm. We're not from that source of empowerment it definitely yeah. doesn't come from control to your yeah. point yeah so- absolutely absolutely and it's interesting um when you were talking you know you were just talking about you know the positive emotion and and things that that light us up versus drain us and it's something that when i think about it is lots of us i guess have just been trained that the same or or the things that are repetitious that we know provide comfort. Like there's this thing mm-hmm. in our heads where that's how we translate them. Now, people like me, I'm sort of more of a bit of a, a squirrel approach, you know, so curiosity and things like that light me up. So I'm lucky in that sense. So change, yeah. you know, all this, like I'm one of those weirdos that's like, woohoo, you know, the great mm-hmm. unknown, <laughs> whereas yeah. most people aren't. But I think that's a conditioning. I think part of that is the way we're brought up and and the experiences we have. So starting for even our teams to learn that curiosity can have a positive feeling, you know, and that can therefore be more empowerment, therefore more growth, yeah. therefore, you know, like that. that's where, you know, innovation, all these things are going to come from is when we associate positive feelings to those. And, and but it starts there too with an experience, right? I mean, do yeah. you, when you, when you, when you talk about yourself, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you had a wonderful experiences or outcomes, you know, that came through your path of curiosity. Yeah. So, but most people haven't had these experiences, so no. they're kind of like locked in their box. Yeah. And again, it's the it's it's our as leadership or as company owners, it's 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 our job. Again, you hire these people to receive their full potential. Yeah. So then then do something for it <laughs> so yes. that they can come in their potential, so they can really contribute to your company's need and success. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of like what sometimes bothers me, or not bothers that the right way, what I just don't really understand. Why would you hire somebody when you then are not interested in really getting their full potential? Yeah, yeah. To only get a small part of who they are and what they can do um, because you're yeah. limiting that part by your yeah. very actions. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything else we've missed? Like is there any sections of the app that you've we've missed in terms of for, for people who are going to check it out and and um, take a look at it for their teams? Have we covered everything? I'm just thinking. I, 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 maybe one, I think it's, it's. I really want to emphasize it's very simple to use. It's, yep. we, we have a full onboarding service. It's all yep. for free. We have a great, uh, what we call customer success team. Yep. They're there also to give individual guidance. I think mm-hmm. that's very important so that it's, it's um, th- there's a lot of flexibility. So we're always trying to make it work for, for the customer and and really are interested in their own unique situation. Yep. Um, I think that's where we also are different than others. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we are, we are playing the advantage of being a young company where <laughs> wherever it goes, you can even call us if you want. Yeah, fantastic. So my my point is, you know, like we're not a large corporation, and and we yeah. we really truly want uh, companies to thrive, and we make it as easy as possible. So there's no huge investment whether it's time or or money yeah. to to get your team started and, and improving their emotional intelligence. Yeah, fantastic. Um, oh, this is so exciting. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about MUA, then the website link is in the episode show notes. Um, I've also included uh, Julius's LinkedIn details. So I'm hoping that's all right that the, you know, if somebody's really curious, they can just reach out and sort of um, see where, you know, where you're at, what you're about, and also maybe um, connect with questions and you might forward them on to a member of your team. But um, then I'd encourage people to really start thinking about the way that we both um, support and engage our teams uh, going forward. I think we all know it's something that's necessary, but uh, up to this point, probably haven't had something that was a tool we could just start doing that would just be a beginning, you know, (laughs) to doing these as businesses. So thank you so much um, for your insights. fascinating conversation. I really appreciate your time and I can't wait to see where you and Moore go because I think it'll be something that can really change the way that we both run and, you know, engage our businesses. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. So 
what a fascinating conversation, right? I mean, normally I'd say, hey, are you a current user uh, of more? But I'm almost certain that nobody listening to this podcast in the Australian advice, financial advice sector is using this tool. It is in early stages and, um, you know, is, is really just starting globally in terms of interacting with employers to use the tools. So I have no doubt you're probably not. Um, however, it's really sparked some uh, thoughts for me, I've got to admit, uh, and I'm hoping for you uh, in the way that we can potentially engage our teams um, and really, you know, sort of help them thrive going forward. Uh, so I'd love to start that conversation on the Ensemble Community Platform. So if this is sort of lit your, your curiosity a little, maybe you're just completely think it's a waste of time what you know all views welcome so please feel free head over to the ensemble community platform and post tag me i would honestly love to hear what you think um and you know what your take is on this type of app and this type of insight into our teams and as for my thoughts well look I, so many things running through my mind right now one of them is in relation to change management so um, you know, and Julius mentioned that a couple of times. And as as a industry broadly, well, there's lots of that, isn't there? I mean, that's a given. But even in our practices, you know, there's a couple of key things that are going to be happening in the next maybe few years for anybody's business. Um, one, there's probably going to be a major tech change, right? At some point, we're all going to go, right, I'm shifting from here to here, whatever that is. And I'm not talking ancillary apps. I'm talking, you know, something fundamental to business. We're going to make a big change. So that will require some change management in the business. The second thing is we're potentially going to shift quite significantly the, either the service we provide or who we're targeting, right? So those are two major projects that we're going to be working on in the next few years. And change management um, is tough and quite honestly can be – quite a demoralizing and negative experience for the staff depending on how it's you know handled so i can see a tool like this where it gives the team the opportunity to reflect um, on the work they end up doing on those types of projects, how it makes them feel and makes us better aware of how the team is feeling about it. Because I think, you know, as entrepreneurs or business leaders, we can get very excited about these things and have just decided it's a good thing and that's great, but we aren't taking the team on that journey with us and we're not taking their temperature as we go. And so I think this can be a wonderful way to um, monitor and also help the individuals understand the reactions to these things, right? Understand that perhaps they're just reacting to the fact it's different. It's new, you know, and this is a process we've got to go through. And when they get to the other side and see value, wow, that's going to feel really good. So I think there is immense value in that. I also think that, you know, I, I'm a big believer, as you know, in curiosity and the power it has to innovate in our businesses. But what is clear from what Julius is saying is we need to, over time, associate positive feelings with curiosity, right? We need to have that as something we reflect on and, and notice and that our teams are rewarded for being curious about something, for showing interest in something outside the box, for bringing a new idea to the to the team for, you know, all those sort of things. I mean, imagine the insights from the different types of team meetings you have and the way they feel about it broadly across the team. So, look, I just think there's so many ways that this could bring insights um, and honestly at a cost, you know, that is is sort of ludicrous when we compare it about compare it against what we think those things are going to cost, you know, so team building or or employee engagement or any of these things feel and honestly are often very expensive, um, whereas uh, my understanding, I checked the website again, but US $10 a month per team member, right? So, you know, for 120 US a year, you can be getting these wonderful thematic insights into how the team, you know, per person, how the team are going um, and, you know, how they're feeling about things. And, and imagine contributing so significantly to your team's EQ. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but that feels, that feels fantastic as an employer. Um, that feels like you've contributed, even if somebody's only with you for a certain period of time, maybe it's a couple of years. That's the new world, right? We're, we're not going to have these long um, roles in corporates anymore. Potentially, they're going to be longer. But imagine for the time they're with you, 
you take them on a journey of discovery to resilience, to thriving. I, that just sounds uh, magical to me. So I have to admit, no surprises then, I'll be taking a really close look at Moore um, and we'll be considering how we roll it out and what we do. Um, but look, I'm excited. I really am. And I think this is quite an unusual um, app for me to bring to your attention. Um, And for those of you still with us that didn't sort of clock off in the first minute or so, thank you for your attention. But I feel like um, then we need to be more uh, holistic, ironically enough, about the approach we take to technology and, and the benefits it can give us. And so I feel like this is, you know, a gap in maybe what some of the things we've been chatting about to date. Now, gee, I was just talking about curiosity, wasn't I? And we all know, Bionic Advisors, we need that curiosity as something that we develop as a muscle. So today's Curiosity Corner app uh, that I wanted uh, to suggest you take a look at is Spoke.ai. That's S-P-O-K-E dot A-I. And their tagline is uh, Smarter Meetings with Your AI Assistant. Now, you can find them at Spoke.app. Um, and while what we were talking about before was a very um, emotive and and therefore less tangible um, app usage, um, what we're talking about here is particularly tangible. So it's a bit of a counterpoint uh, for uh, for Moore and what we were discussing. Discussing. So this is a tool that can work with Zoom, Google Meet, and Microsoft Teams. So across the board of any of them, and it basically is provides automated AI driven minutes video highlights of the meeting and search for during team meetings. So it provides hands-free note-taking, agenda tracking, all those sorts of things. Um, and in fact, highlights or specific talking points from a team meeting could then easily and almost immediately be captured for with transcripts um, for training, for future reference materials, you know, put them in your knowledge base. If you use Guru, <laughs> put them in Get Guru. Um, and for me, you know, for those of you holding virtual team meetings, um, we are, lots of us are now, then I think this sounds like it's well worth a look. Now, there are elements of this that each of the tools do now provide, you know, transcripts, uh, things like that. They're starting to get better at note taking. Um, this is sort of taking it to another level in terms of almost mm, repurposing that content. What can you use it for? What what snippets can you take out? Um, so it's taking it to that next level. Uh, very important that you, when you take a look, dive straight into the security and privacy settings, run them past your licensee. I feel like this is the type of thing that's a team meeting tool rather than a client meeting tool. But you know what? I think you need to look at that yourself and then check in with your licensee and how they feel about it um, from a security and privacy sense. Uh, But for any of us holding virtual team meetings, then I think it's absolutely worth a first cut and probably a bit of a play. Um, I want to say a big th- thank you and shout out. This was actually a tip from Grant Miller, who's in the Ensemble community, um, in response to a post by Adele Martin, so <laughs> who's also in the community. So thank you both um, very much. And I'd encourage you, the listener, uh, if you have other apps that work for you um, or even an app you've seen, even if it's outside advice, tech technical you know, technically outside advice, um, but you're curious about it and you're not sure about it, then please either drop a post in the Ensemble Community platform and tag me, Peter Diamantidis, um, or reach out on LinkedIn because I'd love to know about them uh, and I'd love to check them out as part of the podcast in a future episode. Welp. That's all we've got for this week. Whew, it was a little bit of a longer one, so thank you for sticking with us. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And if this episode has sparked some ideas or maybe a need for you for some ways to further engage your team and you know connect with them and connect them with each other, then I would actually love to and have done many before of facilitated team building sessions um, for your particular team tailored to you and them and what you're trying to achieve. And we work on building their curiosity muscle in their personal lives and then connecting that to how we can all work together. Um, and you work together as a team and and innovate for your practice. So if that's of interest, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. That's LinkedIn forward slash Peter M-D-P-E-I-T-A-M for Molly D4. Dog. 
Oh, yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, Advice Explorers, stay curious. Stay <laughs> curious.